All right, guys, I'm back. Let's do some painting and talking. So, <clears throat> does anyone have any questions that they want to start asking? Go for it. I got a quick one. <laughs> yeah, go for it. So, uh, I a few months ago, I had a friend go to GDC here in California, and Please. he talked to a bunch of artists and showed, showed them his portfolio, and... He said that uh, when showing them uh, his portfolio, apparently most of his work wasn't the right stuff, because he said that they said uh, they told him that if you want, if you're looking for say character design, you only want to show character design and nothing else. So no environment design, no other work. Is that true? Uh, I would, I would... Can I add to the question? Whoa! Take it easy, everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, go because for it. I have very, very, very similar question, but a different experience. Because I was showing my portfolio to an art to concept artist from Avalanche, and he said, "Like, will be nice if you also have environments together with characters." So, where is the truth? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was about to answer that both of those questions, even though there's only one question that was asked. <laughs> so uh, the the answer is just take in what you. Uh, take in information that is relevant to what you want to do. Because, and I think I've talked about this previously in, in one of our classes, actually, which is that you'll when you go to these events, you'll hear people tell you you don't have enough of this or you don't have enough of that or you have too much of this or too much of that. And you'll hear it even at the same event. Like, you'll hear two different pieces of advice from two different recruiters or art directors. And it's super confusing. Right, and I think it was J John in the different class. Was it was it someone in this class actually that was asking about like, hey, if I add this in my portfolio, wouldn't that decrease my chances of getting a job? I'm not sure if it was one of you it guys. It was the um, evening class day two. Uh, okay. One, yeah. Yeah. So one of the students was asking this question, I, and that's probably why you guys don't know, because I answered that question there, which was, don't worry about what the employers want, worry about what you want, because you cannot control what they want. You understand? Because if if you put together a portfolio of consisting of only characters, and then you apply for a job, and you're like, hey, we want environments in here, now you're going to be scrambling to put environments in your portfolio, and then the, the, the someone else, and then they, let's say they don't give you a job, and then someone else is on the flip side, you show them to them, and they're like, oh, there's too many environments, you should only have characters. And you're like, what? You know? So the solution is really simple. Just put whatever you want in your portfolio. If you want to do both environments and characters into your portfolio, yeah, then put characters and environments in your portfolio. If you want to do characters only, then just do characters only. Okay? And people are going to tell you that you're not doing this or you're not doing that. And ask, ask yourself, why would they say that? And one of the most obvious answers to this this problem is that your stuff's just not good enough. That's usually just what it is. You understand that? Because think about it. You guys know artists who do either 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 or, right? Like you guys know of artists online who either do only characters, like myself, right? And you know artists who do both characters and environments, or only environments. You guys know that, right? Yeah. And these people are working. So what do, what do they all have in common? They're just good artists. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Their stuff is just undeniably good. You know what I mean? Like, are you are you telling me that someone like Vitaly Bulgarov, who only does mechs, you're telling me that if he went to that same recruiter, that recruiter was like, yeah, you know what? You just don't have enough environments. Do you see the, do you see the obvious the obvious solution now, right? Mm -hmm. For one, he probably wouldn't even apply to that company. Right? <laughs> and two, people come to him. Cause like if I want a mech design, who am I gonna go to, Vitaly? Right? Do you understand? This mm -hmm. makes sense now. My good friend John Park. 
You know, he does environments and characters, but mostly kind of key art, right? It's the kind of thing he does. Okay. He works in the movies. Right? No question. You understand? Yeah. So you don't have to limit yourself to just one thing. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. But mm -hmm. if people tell you that, oh, you don't have enough of this or enough of that, it might be just the off way of saying they, they just don't like your work. And okay. there's, there's, they're just trying to be polite. Right? Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I've heard that all my career, too. And I've pretty much only done character stuff, and I've been pretty much a character designer. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's just... It's just that I think what happens is that when you guys are starting out, you want to get a job. You want to work in the industry. And I'm trying to tell you, like, who cares? Who cares about working in the industry? Because I'll tell you guys right now, um, you'll get those jobs eventually. It's just going to happen, you know? And there was someone in that same class who was, it was great because I was telling, I was saying the same thing, right? And there was someone in that class that was like, yeah, I work, I work in industry. I work on casino games. And I'm not a big fan of it. You know what I mean? And they yeah. potentially did everything right. They like had all the right things that the, the employer was looking for to get them that job at that time. Right? Uh, and now they're looking for a way out. Right? I'd rather just be patient. You guys be patient and wait till your work is somewhere you want it to be. Yeah. Doing things you want to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Regardless of what a uh, person in power says to you guys, you know. Plus, you're going to hear all kinds of things. You're going to hear people say that it's not, it's not loose enough. It's not tight enough. It's not uh, stylized. It's too stylized. Uh, you have too many characters. You have too little. You have too many of this, too little of that, right? The number one thing that you guys should only worry about is the quality of your work. Is it good for what it is? Because if it isn't, then who cares if you have this or that, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to get turned down not because of you had too little of this, it's because you're just not good enough. That's usually what it is. Got it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's yeah. Just, they're just trying to be polite, and they try to find off okay. ways of saying it. Uh, but like, so how do you? So here's a better way of navigating that now, right? Now that you know kind of the truth, <laughs> which is this is how you navigate this: is that you try to get them, um, you try to get to the root of why they don't like your work. Mm -hmm. Right, and the good ways of doing that would be along the lines of just like asking, "What can you do to improve the work you have now?" Say, so like, so, "Okay, I hear what you said, but I'm curious with the work that I have now because I really want to be this. I want to be a X or Y, whatever it may be. What are the next steps to improve upon that? You know, mm -hmm. you know, don't discount their." their advice, if they really truly believe that you don't have enough of something, then, you know, take that. Take that information and use it. But be objective. You know, if you want to be a character dude, then be a character guy. You know, don't put environments in your portfolio. Right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you want to listen and try to get to the root of the problem. Like, um, you know, just listening to somebody and then just disregarding it, their criticism is just as bad as taking their criticism 100% literal. You know? you want, There's like a good balance between like sometimes you'll hear a character guy tell you all the things you're doing wrong with your character design. It's funny because at a, an event, for instance, uh, you had one person, Shadi Safadi, who's pretty much just like cheat. Use photos, use um, 3D, you know, use everything to cheat to make a good image. And then you had someone like Marco Djurjevic was like, I don't hire anybody who doesn't do line art. Mm -hmm. right, it was like two extreme ideals. They're both right, but they're both wrong. You know what I mean? Like, Shani's mm -hmm. right that you should, you should not limit yourself 
to some strict traditional reasoning, but to say that only doing like painting is dead is is also really obviously not true. Okay, and then you have someone like Marco Dzurzic who's like all this photo bashing stuff is garbage. I only take painters. Again, he's he's right because there's something very valuable about having traditional training and understanding of lighting and forms, right? But you can still get amazing artwork with 3D and some good photo bashing, you know? Mm. So it's like, you know, the people were super confused at that event, <laughs> hearing two of their idols contradict each other. Because again, it's just it's just like what makes sense to you? Like, what appeals to you? You know? If Marco appeals to you, then, you know, follow Marco's uh, laws. If Shadi appeals to you, then follow Shadi's. Right? Um, mm -hmm. For me, I follow whatever makes good artwork. I'm pretty open-ended. Right? I like to use photos. I like to use 3D. I like to paint. I like to do whatever makes a good image. Mm-hmm. But it's just focused on specifically like characters and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Does it help Thanks. out? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Don't be, don't be too dis too confused. Like, you guys are just starting out. That's so why you guys are. Everything seems like just the truth. But like everything, the more you get information, the more you know. Right, and the the better you'll you'll feel. So in my experience, that like this happens a lot when my students really freak out when they get this <laughs> when that happens to them. We're just like, oh man, I was told all of this type of things, and I'm like, yeah, I know. Calm down. <laughs> and it seems like in Tatiana, she had like the opposite experience, right? Where everyone was telling her she didn't have enough. It's like. Um, it's super confusing, but in my, my experience, it's like, I think what really people are trying to get to is that they, you just don't have good work or your work's not for them. You might have good, you might have great work, but you just might not be able to work there. You know, mm. like I have, I have good work, but I can't work at Pixar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I go to Pixar, they're going to say, I don't have enough animation stuff and they would be right. You know? Mm-hmm. Makes sense, yeah. Thanks. Like, I'm just not going to be able to work there, or DreamWorks or any other animation studio. It's just very unlikely to happen. Although I love their, their movies, you know? <laughs> yeah. They're right. awesome. Yeah, cool. Any other questions? I had a question relating to portfolios. Yeah, go for it. Um, I was just wondering, like, when you go to, like, events for portfolios and stuff, like, how do you, like, see it laid out? Like, do you prefer, like, seeing on, like, digital tablets or a physical portfolio binder, or do people nowadays, like, show them off on their phones? Like, Yeah, it's, it's changing, right? I think people do it on their phones nowadays and stuff, and uh, I don't mind. It, it doesn't matter, bother me. Maybe other people might bother. I'm not sure. I can't speak for others. But for myself, I don't, it doesn't bother. I used to tell my students that they should have a physical portfolio because a physical portfolio doesn't accidentally shut down. Or uh, the Internet. You don't need the Internet. You know? Yeah. Uh, but that's only, that is the only reason why you should have a physical portfolio. Because um, now I get it, like, just digital works better. Tablet, tablets aren't hard to look at, um, and tablets are better. So I mean, just whatever. Just make sure whatever you do, that your work can be seen. Whether that means carrying around a battery pack to charge your iPad or i or your tablet, um, saving all your artwork. This is a su surprising thing. I don't know why people still don't do this. Saving all your artwork offline. Like, I, I mean, this countless amount of portfolios where they're like, all right, let me show you, and then, like, they're loading, 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 and it's just like, you know? Like, I, I know that they, they feel real embarrassed, and they feel real awkward at that moment. And I don't mind. I don't I get it. It's technology, you know? It doesn't bother me, but 
but it, it just it, it's it is kind of silly like why did I, I was like you got to save yourself offline I that's usually my first critique to them and I'm like because this <laughs> you know like just open up your gallery and we can look through it like the, the only thing you're worrying about is your battery you know so I would highly recommend if you're using digital like save your stuff offline as well as online you know just so there's always a way to look at your work. Oh yeah, disable passwords. Yeah, stuff like that. Like, just try to make the experience of just looking at the portfolio not like a hiccup. <clears throat> because for me, I don't mind at all. Like, I, it, like if there's a little bit of lag or drag, like it doesn't bother me. I get it, you know. Um, but I mean, if you're looking at someone who's not as patient as I am, I mean, they might not. They might look at that as very unprofessional, you know. And so, I don't know, but I don't speak for others. I can only speak for myself. And so, for me, it doesn't bother me, but I, it is definitely awkward. It definitely is, like, it takes a little time, you know, yeah. to get the portfolio process going if it's, like, loading or you your, your tablet shuts off halfway through, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, that would be my advice. I, I don't think it matters how you decide to, to present it to me. But in general, in my experiences, um, seeing other people get their portfolio reviews when I was like going through that whole process myself, um, making it as easy as possible, putting it in front of them, and just being comfortable with your work um, is probably the biggest thing. Just don't be telling people why you suck. Just show them your work. They'll tell you why you suck. You know, like a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm sorry, like, you know, I'm still working on this, I'm like this and that. If there's very specific questions you want answered, then ask those questions. Don't tell them that you're not good at artwork, like passively, you know, because then you're giving them something to critique. That might not be something you wanted them to critique. You know what I mean? Like you want them to genuinely critique your work for what it is, like when they look at it, because those are going to be the most honest usually, right? And then it, it might hurt, but at least you'll get some real, like, criticism. So, for instance, mm -hmm. like when I uh, showed my stuff to Scott Robertson back when I was starting out, I just showed it to him, and I just said, like, this is my work, what do you think? And he was like, you need to work on your materials, your materials are really garbage. And I was like, all right, cool. And then I left and started working on my materials because they were garbage. You know what I mean? I didn't say, oh, I'm sorry I suck. Sorry that I'm showing this. Sorry. You know, I, be confident with your failures. <laughs> you know, be confident with your, your garbage of a portfolio that you may think it is, you know? <clears throat> and and then that way when the criticism is given to you, then you can... Um, you can take it a little bit more actively. A good a good way of thinking about it is like if you were to go to a racing coach, a person, or a person that was to teach you how to run a race, <clears throat> and you come to him and say, I think I can run a five-minute mile. And the coach is like, oh, that's cool. Well, this is how you race a five-minute mile. This is what you do. And tell you, they gave you all this advice. And then you go to run, and you actually go on an eight-minute mile. And all the advice they gave you is good advice for someone who can run an actual five-minute mile. But the advice they should have gave you was would have been different if they knew that you were only can run your best time was like eight minutes. Do you understand? Because if you're running at five or four-minute miles, then they assume that you're you have a meta game going. You're at like a different level, right? Mm -hmm. And so then when they train, or they give you the advice on that, then you're just like, oh, okay. And then you go, and then you're like terrible runner, right? Um, and so in the same instance with the art stuff, saying, like, I know I have to work on my anatomy, whatever, or I know I have to work on this and that, right? They might start crit criticizing and giving critiques on your anatomy. But when the reality is the first thing that probably stood out was that your designs are pretty awful. Anatomy is the last thing you need to worry about. Does it make sense? But you you derailed the criticism to, to cater to what you just said. Like, you rather them just start off saying, your designs are really bad. And then 
like that, like you might have had anatomy on your mind, but they just told you to do designs, you know? That's very, 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 very valuable. <clears throat> or vice versa. Like you have anatomy on your mind, and they just say your anatomy is awful, and then your suspicions are correct, right? And if you and here's another problem that I, th I see, like people only get their, their stuff critiqued by one or two people. You should get it critiqued by dozens, dozens of people if you can, because you want to get an average of information, right? Like, what was the most common thing said about your portfolio? Mm. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff mm -hmm. is really powerful. So yeah, hopefully that helps out. Like I think just don't being afraid. Just let people tear you apart. Um, I mean, that's the whole point of the critique, right? Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be like, oh, we got you a job. Like, you're, here's a job, you know? Like a lot of you guys aren't at that level yet. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, people assume too, if you say that you're a student, that it, it excuses your bad work. <laughs> it's like... Uh -huh. it's, you know what I mean? Like, don't say stuff like that. Just go up there and show people your work. You know? Just show them what it is. If you want to be treated like a professional, then you should show your work like a professional. A professional doesn't say that they're students, right? And let me tell you, I did that. When I first started out, and I was literally a student. I saw there's two lines. There's a student line and there's a professional line. <clears throat> and one year, I stood in the student line. The student line was out the door. You know? In the professional line, there was no line. And then the next year, I got rid of the tag on my, because of my badge. I got rid of, uh, I got rid of like student. I put concept artist instead. All right? I said I feel like I'm a professional. I got work that I believe can be used in the industry. I'm going to go to the professional line, but I was still in school at the time. Got it? And then when I went to uh, the professional line, the criticisms were so much better. Because they were saying, like, why they, they didn't need my work. All right. They were saying we should go to, like, events, and, like, just pretend we're professionals? <laughs> no, not pretend. I'm not saying okay. pretend. Like, what What do you think makes a professional? That you have to work awesome. in the, Yeah, that you have to work in the industry or you have to have awesome art? Awesome art. I, I met plenty of artists who had never worked in the industry but had better artwork than I did. You know what I mean? And it's just like, if you go to these lines and you act and demonstrate that you are a professional. Like, trust me, if after this class, if you guys do all the work that I suggest you do, you guys can work professionally. You can. Okay? So you shouldn't be afraid that you're not capable. You, you guys are all capable. This is very similar to what you would expect in the industry. Like, they just make you draw a lot. And do a lot of iterations. And make changes all the time. If you could do that, then you could work. Right? Seriously. And so, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say pretend. I'd say really just go there and act as they are, uh, or just demonstrate that you're a professional and have work in your portfolio that's professional looking. That's all. Like, don't have pencil drawings on blue paper, you know, like in a three-ring binder. Mm -hmm. um, don't have life drawing and, still, like, still life drawings in there. Like, have character designs, environment designs, character or weapon designs, you know? If you guys know what professional portfolios look like, that you can just go to Art Station. Seriously, you'd be shocked. Oh, gosh. Getting like a real bad headache. Lack of sleep. You guys hear what I said? Can you guys hear what I said in the background? My wife's trying to potty train her. My wife's trying to potty train her right now. He's not. He's not excited about this.
All right, anyway. I actually um, we had another question. More about health um, rather than drawing. Um, do, you, do you do any kind of like exercises or stretches when you feel intense back pain or like a carpal tunnel pain coming from having to do art for long hours? Um, I rarely have that now. And I think it's because I switched my diet to a vegan diet. And it unclogs your arteries. And the, the, the carpal tunnel is an artery clogging thing. It's like the, the, the carpal tunnel is just full of just shit. And when you keep your hand and arm or whatever in that position for long periods of time, so that shit um, doesn't get flushed out or at all. And so then it just builds up and creates pain in your wrists, right? So, yeah, I don't have that, really. Um, and I also oh, no. want, yeah, and, what, and I used to do it all the time. And what I did before, I will just put my arm straight up for, like, five minutes or for, like, a minute or two every five to ten minutes until it went away, and then I would draw again. And I just did that. Just had to do it if I wanted to work and paint. Uh, another thing is I don't push down as hard as I used to. I think that was another thing. Um, and in terms of stretching and exercises, no, I don't really do anything like that. Um, right now, I'm going through, like, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, this, like, whole headache problem. And it has something to do with some potentially autoimmune disease. And so we're going through, we're doing some tests and stuff already to try to figure it out. But I think it has to do with just, um, yeah, just overworking over the last 10 years. So I'm trying to work less and less and less. Or not less, but just like smarter. And less. And spend more time with like the family and stuff. Like I used to have an office, and I used to work from the office. But I just decided not to do that anymore. And then now I can like hang out with my kiddos. Like, after, like for instance, when we were on break, I just lay down. Because I can. Because I'm in my bedroom, you know? Just like take a break. And then uh, after this, I'm probably just going to tell it that again. <laughs> Good job, son. Hey, what the? What's your booty doing out? What's your booty? Let me see a little Pikachu. He can start school now. Oh, yeah? Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. So, like, I mean, for me, it's just it's a matter of priorities. Because I think I thought about it. I was like, why am I doing all this work? You know, like, what's the point of it? So I can have more time with the people I care about, right? Because I've been able to do game nights with my friends, hang out with my wife and kids a little bit more during the day, which is nice. Yeah, you know, I'm like... If I keep this up, I don't. I might not have time for anything as I get older. You know, it's kind of silly. It's backwards. And I'm in a I'm in a great position where I could work from home because I do the teaching and stuff, and I do one of my videos, and that's more than uh, enough for me to sustain the life that I have right now. So that's what I decided to do. Yeah. And I actually wish that upon everybody. In fact, one of the the things I'm working towards is teaching people how to become their own employee and work for themselves and make their own money. Like, screw this working for other people's stuff. Right? Like, do you yeah. Home? yeah, not entirely screw other people. I mean, in a, in a mean way. I just mean, like, um, so for instance, okay, so for instance, there's a website called Roll20. On the Robo Pencil, uh, Facebook group, I made a video about this, but <clears throat> basically it's like a website where you can uh, make D&D &D adventures with your friends online, and you can like buy like pieces and stuff for resources, like digital goods, you see what I'm saying? So this here's like the undead pack that I did. You see? And then you can, like, purchase it for five bucks. And this artwork was 
not dictated by anything other than that it's a tabletop type of game, so it's like looking down at it. Right? That's it. And uh, I decided to do zombies, you know? Because I like to draw zombies. So the zombies. And they looked at it and they said, cool. And then they put it on the site. And I think more and more of that kind of stuff is going to exist for, for artists and creators, like content creation type stuff. You know? Uh, and I'm looking to Steam. Steam does stuff too with like, uh, like skins for some of their games, you know? They do contests and profit sharing amongst, you know, the community. And like, for instance, I know Dota does that, where people can design skins for their game. You know? Do you understand kind of what I'm putting down? Mm-hmm. That there's opportunities you guys have that I, I didn't necessarily have because the internet's getting smaller. What I mean by that, I'm sorry, the internet's getting bigger and making the world smaller, which means that more and more people can be connected with one another. Like, here, another way of thinking about it is that if you have 10,000 fans, follow your work and love your stuff say 10,000 that's not a lot of people I mean it's a lot of people but it's not really right not like compared to like someone like Kim Kardashian who has like millions of people right tens of millions of people follow her so you have 10,000 people who follow you and only a thousand of them support you in all that you do and let's say you put down videos for like a dollar to five dollars so you potentially will make two to three thousand dollars on average a month, right? That for a lot of people is enough, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at yeah. look at look at Ross Tran. You guys know Ross Tran? Mm-hmm. Like he has, he's not really he's really a noob in the industry like he, he's not really worked on many things he only worked on one movie I think right but he made a name for himself and he made a YouTube channel and now he's making on his Patreon two to three thousand dollars per illustration per, per video he makes so if he makes two videos that month then he's made six thousand dollars right So, I mean, you got to consider your, all your options, guys. You don't have to just be other concept artists, you know? You can you can probably do something that is artistic in, in mind and create your own world even and find an audience. You know, it, might, it might not be a big one, but that's, you don't need a big one. That's my point. Do you have any advice on um, growing an audience? Yeah, put your you- out there. That's, that's like literally... The best advice I could give anybody. I get asked this all the time, right? People ask, like, what I did. And it's like, you know, to be honest, I didn't do anything special. I just post often. Do you, do you, where would you recommend? Because I've been there. Anywhere. That's something I've been doing because I've been posting on Instagram now every day for the last, well, going up for a half a year now. Oh, see, so, so, you, so you, have, you should have a numbers then, right? Well, so what were your number? About 100 so far, but it's... And you post how often? Once a day. Once a day, and you post on Instagram. What's your Instagram? Uh, Tom V. Field. Tom V. Field. Instagram. Error. What? Oh, this no, is... That was not Instagram. Yeah, it was not Instagram. What the? Here. Yeah, I always find Instagram a bad one from Google searches. Speaking of Vitaly, Tom V. Field. And now you actually have to... That's the other thing that annoys me about Instagram is that you can't... It doesn't prioritize direct names. It prioritizes 
followers, even if there is an actual direct what you typed, which that's is ridiculous. Stupid. I didn't know that. Well, that's, then that's good for me because I always use an alias. Maybe you need to too because uh, Tom Field doesn't seem like a very unique name, right? Is yeah. This it? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, because um, for me, Robot Pencil, I had that name because I know Anthony Jones is very common. Yeah, I was thinking same thing because there's a hell of Tom Fields out there. So you got 119, as you suggested, and let's go through this, the notion. Oh, there you go, handsome fella. <laughs> as, as you said, you post a lot I'm looking at this stuff. So then the question then might be the quality might not be there, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And so, but this is this is a lot. But just to give you context, like you should do research. Like my buddy Danny... He's posted a thousand, almost fifteen hundred. Um, what you call it? Instagram yeah. posts, right? So that's almost ten times more than yours, right? About ten times more. Yeah. And it's not all of them are art, right? Sometimes it's a silly ass picture of him, but but the artwork is like really high quality as well. Right, so there is definitely a combo of the two, but I say I tell people post a lot anyway because as you get better, you just get better anyway, right? Yeah. And then eventually, all those old, really terrible posts that you may have had in the past, just kind of they're impossible to find. Get drowned out. Yeah, but even if you find them, it's great for students and people that are aspiring to be like you because then they see, oh my gosh, yeah, like, that's right. Like they started thinking. started from scratch. Um, and so posting, so posting often is kind of the point I'm trying to make, because if you go to me, um, I got only 244 posts, and I got almost 53 or 54, right? But I post pretty much only artwork, right? And when I posted. There was a time where I posted, I didn't post at all, and I had barely any kind of followers. And I don't mean barely, I had like a thousand, which is still a lot, but that's because it trickled over from my Facebook, you know? What do you think? You can see, like, right around, right around when I started my baby stuff. So you can see I had like 300 some odd likes, you know, on average, because I didn't have that many followers, right? But now I, like, top at 2,000 minimum usually, you know? Like, there, and sometimes I get 6,000, like, really high numbers. Like, there was, uh, like, this one got a pretty high, it was 3,000, and then this one got 6,000, almost 7,000. And this is important because this to me says that people want me to paint more of this stuff. Yeah. And so then painting more of that stuff generally, so I, I, I proved that to be true by posting more of my stuff that was very similar. And they always get very high likes. You understand? And so it's like a good scope of like seeing how people react as well. But for, for example, Facebook, I basically posted on Facebook for pretty much my whole career. So almost six, potentially seven years of just posting online every day or every other day. Do you understand? Yeah. Like, there is no surefire way because the obvious thing is post good artwork, right? But that's that's pending, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Like you're you're gonna be only get better and better the more you work. You've already gotten so much better in the class, right? And so, imagine two years from now what your kind of work you're gonna have. But if you built the good habit of posting often, right? Which is something that I encourage everybody. Is just get in the habit of posting. 
because then you'll post your work even if you don't like it because your work is good and people like it but then you don't like it and you don't post it that's detrimental to your growth of fan base right you post stuff just so you can get people to see it and give you feedback on it whether they say something or not saying nothing also says something right it's just like maybe nobody really likes this type of stuff that you're doing but at the same time you're just posting anyway because you enjoy it right uh so the, a good example of this oops My buddy Alexandre, like, he posts on Facebook pretty often, but he uses Tumblr. Tumblr is his tool of choice. And he posts all the time. Coming back, I, I don't come into the site for like a week, and I come back, and there's like hundreds of images that I've not seen, you know? And it's always exciting. See this? Yeah. And he's getting, like, thousands of reposts and stuff like that. You know? He's getting, like, tons and tons of these, like, reposts and favorites. It's crazy. So, for me, I take this as Tumblr is his tool of choice. You understand? And so, if... Instagram is not your tool of choice. That's fine. It doesn't have to be. Facebook isn't. It doesn't have to be. If Tumblr isn't, it doesn't have to be. Maybe yours is Snapchat. I mean, I don't know how Snapchat works. I don't use it. I mean, I understand how it works, but I don't understand how I'd use it. But, you know, it could be. there could be something there. You know what I mean? It's just up to you. Like, I'm... One of the first people started doing Facebook live streams, right? You know, all kinds of people were doing it. Because they're like, oh, yeah, that's pretty viable. I'd say, damn right, it's viable. And I'm posting as often as I can. And I'm just, just rolling with the punches, you know? What do you uh, use to do live streams? What uh, yeah, I, software for sharing your screen? I use live streams. I used to use live stream, but now I use OBS. I used to use XSplitter, but now, again, OBS. OBS is free. Oh, yeah, I know the one, yeah. It's free and it's easy. Cool. It used, to, it used to not be. It used to be really difficult, but I think they realized that and they fixed it. And now it's super easy. But I just went online and just looked it up. I mean, you got to remember, like, who's teaching me this shit? <laughs> right? Like, who's teaching me the things that I'm teaching you? Right? And the reality is, not that many people, because like, I'm, I'm like on the forefront of a lot of this stuff. And my tactic is really simple. I just go online and just dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. Because I know that as I'm digging, other people aren't. They're stopping and they're like asking other people how to do it, you know? And I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, I want to backtrack real quick. I don't want to say there's anything wrong with ask, asking questions. I think there's something wrong with asking questions and then not necessarily looking for answers yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's good to ask me questions because it's where, like, you guys are open forum. This is a safe space, right? You can ask whatever question. There is no dumb question. But as as my as a teacher, like, my goal is to teach you guys not only how to like, not only catch a fish and give it to you, but teach you how to also catch your own fish. Right? Like, the whole teach a man, or give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Metaphor? Or story? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So this is me giving you the fish, which is just post it often, and just up your game as you do, right? And then just to, over it with time, you'll see the, the them coming. Because even... You went from zero to 100. You know what I mean? And half yeah. a year is not a lot of time. Right? Especially in the scope that, like, Danny's been doing this for his whole life, drawing like that, you know? And then I've been working at this for about 10 years nearly, right? So you, you're just getting started, so it's nothing to get discouraged about. It's a slow burn, and everybody wants to have, like, huge fans, like, right away. 
um, trust me, you want to earn it. Because if you get to, let's say you get to the 100,000, right? And it was a slow burn, like it took you 10 years to get to the 100,000, right? That's going to have so much freaking value for you, you know? Because those are fans and people that you've earned over those years. You get it? That means you'll have a higher conversion. That means instead of like maybe 5%, which is like around the standard, you'll have like 20%. You get it? That means like 20% of the people that follow you actually give a damn and will support you in the things you do. Right? That's a much better position to be in. Like, it, wouldn't it be better to have 100,000 followers and 10,000 of them purchase all the things that you do or invest in the projects that you work on, right? Then to have two million with only a thousand people that give it in. You see the difference, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what I'm at. Like I have nearly um, fifty thousand on t Instagram, and then I have nearly uh, thirty thousand, a little bit more, on Facebook. But my Facebook conversion is much better than my Instagram, which means that that even though it's a high number on Instagram, it's not really. You get it? Because on Facebook, it's like, those are the people that I've truly earned. They've, they've, a lot of them, most of you guys have seen me from the beginning of my career, you know? And it's, it's beyond just fandom. It's more like friendships, even, you know? And so, um, like, I have a really huge conversion uh, on Facebook because of that. Like, when I post things on Facebook, things get sold. You know? And then a mailing list are even better. Like I have a mailing list. These are where you signed up for a mailing list, right? Uh, if you signed up for a mailing list, like I have uh, about 9,000 people on a mailing list, and that's even a larger conversion, right? Even though it's a smaller number of people. You understand? And so, like, you, you don't want big numbers just for the sake of big numbers. You want reliable numbers. Because even if you only had 2,000 followers, but 100 of them, buy things from me, you can count on that. You can budget your life around that that number, you know? Yeah. You don't want it to be sporadic. You don't want it to be like like the fucking Wild West. You don't know. Like every time you put something out there, you're like, I don't know if something's going to happen. You know, this is the advice I give to a lot of my friends who started their own businesses and stuff too. They're just like, hey, you know, how do we, like how do, what's the best way to do this or that? And I said, this is how you do it. It's really simple. Just like just like most things in fucking life, <laughs> you know, it's it's like I I found this out like even like working out, so like uh, or healthy living, right? Everybody knows how to be fit. Everybody does. Like th there really is no secret. Like you see all these different workout programs and do different type of things. Um, of course, there's nuances. I'm not gonna hold shut down the whole fitness industry or anything. I'm just saying like. Everybody knows that there's two things you should need to do right, which is eat eat right and exercise. Right? Did I blow your guys' mind? The secret of fitness? No, right? But the problem is nobody eats right and nobody exercises. <laughs> you know? They're looking for the six pack abs in six weeks type of thing, right? It's just that's not how it works. Like, why don't you try just doing a few sit ups and uh, run a couple of miles every week? once in a while and eat don't eat all that shit you know every day do that for a year you'll be super fit you know and it's, it's just you know people just want the easy way out and it's the same with this art stuff right so like and that's uh, I'm not saying that you're thinking that time you're asking genuinely uh, genuine questions right I'm just trying to, for anyone, if any time you get that, because it creeps in our mind every time, right? It happens to all of us, the best of us, right? We Like, even I, every once in a while, like, what is the easiest solution? Um, but that that has gone away a long time ago. Like, I've, I've been much better about knowing better, you know? <laughs> but, you know, every once in a while, you're like, yeah, what is that cheat code? All right? I get it. It's just part of our humanity. But if you can get past that mentality and just get to the, like, well, I remember AJ used to just say, just do something a lot <laughs> and do it consistently. That's another thing, right? Like, do it consistently. Um, and then thing, things will come. 
and that's been true for so many of my students. Like, I had a student named James Sabata. You guys know James? And he would post live streams every day for like a year. And he grew a huge fan base. And not only that, he got really good because he was painting every day for a year. You know? And so, and he, he was like no better than a lot of you guys. Like, seriously, there's, I know a lot of students who are not like epic when they first started out. And then they, they are some of the most beloved people in the industry. You know? I was really bad too. That's like why I know it's not impossible, guys. Like you guys can clearly all accomplish the things you want to do. Just, uh, just stay consistent. So getting back to like building that fan base, um, like the way that I answer that, like I answered everything, it's just I just basically post often, and I communicate often. I like to talk to people that uh, usually respond to my stuff. Especially on Facebook. Facebook's much easier. Facebook is my tool of choice. Uh, another thing that you might consider when you're doing stuff too, guys, is that don't treat your um, don't treat your social media like social media like uh, a personal page. Like for me, I look at my Instagram, I look at my Facebook, um, like. I look at them as websites, like another extension of my website. Does it make sense? Like, I don't look at them as a way to connect with friends. Like, it is absolutely a great tool for that, and I do, I absolutely do that, right? But I'm trying to say is I don't, like, that's not the primary tool. That's not what I use it for, primarily. Because usually I just text my friends if I really need to get a hold of them or call them. Right? But a lot of people use Facebook for, like, you know, um, other reasons. But if you, use it, if you start treating it like a professional website, I think that, that absolutely adds a lot more spike to that um, social media mentality. Anyway, uh, end this question, or answer this question. Or I'm going to end answering this question. Hope that hope that was helpful. Yeah, man. Thanks. Yeah, dude, totally. Any other questions? I got one. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, so I have a question about internships. So I'm really interested in getting one internship this summer. Uh, one of the companies I'm looking at is Blizzard, and I know that they're very style based. And I was wondering, do I need to kind of uh, get close to that style in my work uh, to get be to kind of get the internship or should I stick to what I do right now? Well, if you want to get an internship at a specific place, it's 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 usually pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Which is like it's back to the whole Pixar thing. Like I'm sure Pixar has internships, and I'll never get them. Mm -hmm. You understand, like. It's it it goes back to if you want to work at Blizzard and you want the internship, then you gotta do what they want, right? It's it's not like that's not there's no delusion there, <laughs> okay? Like, I know yeah. we were just talking about like you should do what you want to do. That's why I started with this prefix. I prefix this with if you want if that's what you want to do, then you gotta have that in your work. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like if you want this internship and you have no stylized artwork in your your portfolio. You're gonna have a hard time getting an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. If they are selling apples and all you got to sell are oranges, you know they're not gonna hire you. The mm -hmm. point of the earlier, the point of the earlier answer was that who cares if you don't work at Blizzard? That was the kind of the point, right? Mm -hmm. Here's a good example. I love Uncharted. Uncharted 4, I have seen it to beat it, actually, but I love the, the franchise. It's my favorite game of all time, the franchise, right? Yeah. But I probably would never want to work at Naughty Dog because I don't want to paint khakis. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Fallout. 
Fallout 4, Skyrim. These games are the, probably the most boringest games I've ever played in my life. I hate them. Everyone loves them. <laughs> Everyone loves them. I hate these stupid games. Like, you just run around, like, collecting stuff, talking to people. Dude, are you kidding me? It's boring. You know? I like yeah. multiplayer games. Like, if it had a multiplayer experience, then I, I would love it. But it doesn't. I hate the fact that I, I went into a town. I got a guard to chase me to this glitchy area. And I kept shooting arrows into him until he died. And I, he was clearly so higher level than I was that I would have to pull arrows out of his body so I could shoot at him again. Mm-hmm. But it was glitched, right? He was glitched on this little bridge, and I just kept shooting at him until he died, right? <laughs> and then and then I took his armor, and I just went into the town and massacred everybody. And I stopped playing the game because it was stupid. Right? <laughs> But if they were to, if Bethesda was to reach out to me and was like, "Hey, you know, we want you to work on the like the next Skyrim too," like it would be like the costume or armor or weapon designer, I would absolutely love it. You see the point? What mm-hmm. I'm trying to get at? Yeah. You know, is that who cares if Naughty Dog makes my favorite games if I don't want to do the stuff that they make? Right? Like, Pixar mm-hmm. makes some of my favorite movies, but like, who cares if I don't have any talking fish things in my portfolio? Like, they're not going to hire... Look at this. You think they're going to... You're going to see this in in the next freaking Finding Nemo? Heck no. Right? So then then, then it's, it's probably more intelligent to look at companies that make more sense. So, with that being said, like, uh, Atlas would probably be a better company, right? They would be a company that I would want to work for because... They do Dark Souls. What is it, Sura? What time are you going to teach? I'm going to go pick up my watch, but I'm only going to take the light out with me. You can just go. Leave Julian. It's fine. I put him in the pull-up cypress, and I already told him he needs to go potty on the bathroom, so he said okay. So yeah, but if, if you got to go ba- potty, let me know, okay? Okay. That's okay. big boys. Yeah, okay. you're a big boy now. Okay. Yeah, Dark Souls is awesome. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, back to to answering this question. <laughs> yeah, so Dark Souls will probably be a, like that company and working on that project would be probably the dream. Yeah, I know. In my in in, in the style of work that I do, but uh, you know, I don't necessarily need to work for them. I feel very content. I'm drawing it already. I don't need to get paid, but the getting paid is just a bonus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I worked at Blizzard. And I fit, mm. I fit in perfectly in the cinematics team because that's more realistic, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, so like, it all depends on where you want to work, man. Right? Yeah. And if Blizzard's yeah. a company you love, and you do actually like the stylized stuff, but yet even though you don't have it in your portfolio, it's never too late. I mean, you're still young, dude. It's not like. It's not like uh, it's not like hardcore hard code mode or hard hardcore mode where you pick the character and you can't switch. This is life, man. You can switch yeah. your genre of careers literally in a year. When I think about like what mm-hmm. you were doing, probably three or what were you doing five years ago? Not much. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a guy. Named, drawing. <laughs> yeah, there's a guy named Gary V. He said he always asks that question to the people that like always have this conundrum of like, ah oh, man, I'm like working really hard, but the opportunities aren't coming. And he's like, how old are you? And they tell him he's like, I'm 22 or 25 or 26 or 32 or 30 or something. He's like, you're still fucking young. He's like, you could do everything wrong for the next three years, wake up and still be fucking young. All right? And I'm like, that's so true. Like I'm only 32. You know what I mean? I'm still pretty young. I still have a lot of time to do different things. I, my last job, I had a coworker. We were talking, and I was like, you know, ten years, I'm gonna start taking, uh, I'm gonna start learning how to become an astrophysicist. And he laughed. He's like, oh, that's funny. And I was like, no, I'm serious. And he's like, what? Really? And I was like, yeah. He's like, uh, okay. And I was like, well, well, what, what makes you think that's not possible? So, well, there are people that spend years of, like, learning how to do this stuff. And I was like, yeah, so I'll spend years. 
So I'm only 32. So that means if I spend another decade, are you saying that I won't have the ability to become an astrophysicist if I spend 10 years learning how to be an astrophysicist? Mm-hmm. I'll be like in my 40s. Like, there's no doubt in my mind I'll be a fucking astrophysicist. <laughs> you know? Yep. Uh, so I told him, yeah, I'm probably going to take it seriously probably later. I actually decided that once I get this board game stuff going and uh, make money from it in a, in a passive way, then I'm going to spend all my time just learning astrophysics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop drawing. I'm going to stop designing. Like if I make the cash cow that makes me uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars yearly and I just need to make a game or two every year and I'll just keep that going. That'll be the best use of my time. And then um, I'll, with all my off time, I'll learn some astrophysicist stuff. But in the meanwhile, I'll watch a lot of science stuff and then I contribute to stuff like this bionic that just freaking, see, it took my computer again to spend. <laughs> Stop your research while I'm teaching my classes, guys. Um, but, like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to contribute in different ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One thing that I was trying to consider was actually getting into some some engineering design, like really to start to engineer a lot of my robots now. I like start to learn how to actually make real robots. That could be mm-hmm. one thing that I can start awesome. doing. Sounds cool. Yeah. Like passively, you know, sub subconsciously, I'll start gaining some knowledge on that and real physics, you know. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you're still young, dude. Take your time. Don't worry if you don't get this internship at Blizzard. It's not a big deal. I never got yeah, a, I, guess. I never got a job at it. I, I never got an internship anywhere. You know, so who cares? If you do, it's great. You know, I'm not saying don't try. I'm just saying if it doesn't happen, you're not mm-hmm. gonna be the only person in the world that's never got that internship that then did not make a living doing some great things. You know, I had people. I had a friend who had an internship. Jason King. He he was an intern there at Blizzard. We call him Booty B because he used to stick his butt out all weird <laughs> whenever we play ping pong. <laughs> um, anyway, Booty B, um, he was going to Art Center. Mm. He was he was so good. I was like, dude, why are you? You've made it. You should try to get a job here at Blizzard. <clears throat> and he's like, no, I'm trying to finish school. And he was telling me like his parents and stuff like that. And I was like, are you kidding? He's like, who cares what your parents think? Like, your parents want you to be successful. They don't want you to finish school. They want you to be successful. And they just know that finishing school helps lead to success. That's what they've been taught. But you and I both know that's not fucking true, you know, especially for our field, right? Mm-hmm. And and he's like, yeah, I don't know. And then now he's working at uh, Sucker Punch. Uh, yeah, just saying. He, he dropped out of school and he's working at a game studio. And so, uh, uh, and he didn't work at Blizzard, but, like, he was doing pretty much professional illustrations. It was like they were putting it into the game, you know? Mm-hmm. It wasn't kind of like, okay, good job, intern, like, see you later, you know? Like, he was doing genuine work. You know, Blizzard also has paid internships, so they, they you know, they genuinely yeah. paid him for that work, you know? Mm-hmm. He was working. It was just so silly. I just didn't understand his logic of going back to school, you know? So do you think master's isn't necessary? Because I'm currently working on my BFA, and <laughs> I plan on getting master's, but I don't know. Is that something? I, I, I'm a big fan of saying, fuck that. <laughs> uh, the education system is just so broken, bro. Yeah, no, I know. It's ridiculously over, overpriced, yeah, especially it, for art schools. It is so backwards, man. Like, there is no practical information that is being taught at these schools. Not not all of them, um, or but most of them are freaking are in this camp. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a good way of thinking about it: if any of your teachers that you have at your school can be easily replaced with someone else, then you're not really learning much, are you? Like think about it like this: like you're taking my like who can replace me in my classes? Nobody, right? Mm-hmm. You're learning yeah. from me. This is the whole reason why you're taking this class, right? And the value of my class is remarkably cheaper than any of these schools, right? Mm-hmm. Think about that. Like, if your teacher could be replaced with another teacher and they can teach the same things, 
and give you the same stuff, then are you really getting your money's worth? And the answer is hell no, right? You're going through a system. You're being, basically being taught mediocre stuff from mediocre teachers. They're teaching you how to just do work. They're not teaching you how to become independent or how to develop your skills and how to, they're just teaching you how to get a piece of paper that promises you nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. I've never been in a situation where they asked me for my diploma or my art education. Nobody <laughs> cares about that. They just look at your artwork and say, he looks, he looks like he could draw well. It's higher. We were in a position once in Sony where we were looking at two different student or two two different people that were graduating from two different schools, one from Art Center, one from Otis. And never in that whole conversation did they bring up Art Center or Otis. The only thing they were talking about was the artwork that the, the people had. One person had a lot more line art and more cleaner drawings. The other person was more painterly, had more story. And and the producer was like, we, we actually have a budget to hire both. And so then the director was like, all right, let's just hire both of them. It was never the, the scenario that a lot of these schools try to paint play, play, was like, hey, you know, but what if you're in a position that your portfolio is in front of another person's portfolio, and then there is a tie. And so who do they hire? Well, if you have that diploma, it's going to give you a better. No, dude, they don't care. Like, it's a harder decision than, oh, the, well, this guy goes, all right, so let's just hire him. It's a harder decision than that. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. we were deliberating because we were arguing whether we should have more painterly stuff or more structured stuff. That was the argument. It had nothing to do with schools. Mm -hmm. You get it? No, I totally get it, yeah. And so um, uh, if you just do simple math, think about it too. Like Think about the math of like college is that mm -hmm. you're going to go to school with thousands of other people. Hundreds of you are going to graduate. In that county or in that district or whatever, or even that state, there's countless amount of people in the same field with the same diploma, and now it's in the thousands, right? Yeah. Like even tens of thousands, potentially, right? So you have like tens of thousands of people graduating from your state, potentially. Well, let's, let's keep it modest. Let's say 5,000 people graduated from your state with a degree that's very similar, right? Let's, let's spread it out to the, the whole United States, actually. Now we got like 20,000, maybe 30,000 people that are graduating with that same degree, right? Mm -hmm. But there's only hundreds of jobs. Or even 1,000 jobs. Let's, say it really, let's really go up there. Like, let's say there's like 1,000, maybe 2,000 jobs out there, but 20,000 people are graduating a year. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a simple number game. So how are, you gonna, how are you going to be able to get these jobs? And I've told you the answer to this. Is it having quality of work? All right, see you later, Lila. <clears throat> okay. Is having quality work, right, and quality in terms of, like, artwork that's undeniably good, unique to yourself, yeah. right? And connecting with people, networking, making friends, right? Those are the only two things you can control. You can't control the num the increasing amount of people graduating from schools. Trust me, you shouldn't be worried about that, by the way, because those people, are, like I said, are mediocre. And a lot of them don't even realize it until it's too late, until they graduated, mm -hmm. like a lot of my friends. And then they're like, wait, why can't we get jobs? Oh, because we don't actually have good artwork. Like, I'm a college mm -hmm. dropout, and I'm the most successful out of my, all of my college friends. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so... The point is, is that and the, the the Gary V guy that I watch a lot, he he said it himself in one of his things is that college does not teach people how to be entrepreneurs, you know, mm -hmm. they just teach people how to become workers, and unfortunately, there's not enough work, right? Mm -hmm. Because all the work goes to all the entrepreneurs, <laughs> you know. And what's yeah. great about teaching entrepreneurs, like I was saying, like I'm switching my strategy of teaching you guys not only just to become good artists, but to be able to make your own money on your own, right? Because mm -hmm. that's that's powerful. If I can, at the end of the class, be like, all right, now you guys go make money, that's the dream <laughs> as a teacher, you know? Yeah. And that will happen, probably not in, within another few years, but I'm making it, I'm going to make it happen. 
but my point is is that yeah like you know don't don't be distracted with like internships or not getting job opportunities focus on getting great work and putting it in front of as many people as possible internships can do that right like internships are awesome for that because you're going to be in studio working with great artists you're going to make friends just because of that alone it has nothing to do with you getting a job. It has more to do with making really great friends because I'm still really good friends with all the people I worked with at Blizzard, all the people I worked mm-hmm. with Sony, all the people I worked at Fire Forge, uh, Paramount, um, you know, online uh, companies that I've worked with too, you know? I'm good friends with a lot of people, man. And so when I'm saying, like for instance, my buddy who gave me my first job ever, he gave me a job at working at Hasbro. It was like my first professional job ever. I'm still good friends with them. I have his phone number in my phone. And that's like literally like almost seven years of just knowing, mm-hmm. talking to each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's starting his own company and he wants my help to help him out with it. And I said, of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, that's just how the fucking world works, dude. Friends want to work with friends. And, you know, people want to work with the best. So you got to be a friendly person and try to be the best. Being the best is the easiest part, I think. Like, being a really good artist, I think, is actually really easy. It's actually fucking really easy. You just draw, like I said, you just draw a lot. <laughs> you just seriously just draw a lot all the time, and that's it. That's all you got to do. Uh, because even if you're studying wrong or you're not paying attention or you're doing everything wrong, just the act of moving that the pen, the Wacom pen on the tablet or pencil and paper makes you better because you're just getting mileage, right? Yeah. Uh, the hardest thing, I think, is, like, the networking part, right? Getting out there, that's talking true. to people. Yeah. I would say put more money, more money and time into that if you can, um, because that's I took full advantage of the fact that I live in Southern California. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, there's people in this this state or this fucking area that like don't go to these events, man, that are here, and it's so silly. It's like, what is what the hell? Like, it costs you nothing. Or people around the world are like, you know, like they, they're they saving their life savings just to go to one event, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, I took full advantage of my location. And a lot of you guys don't need to eventually because, like I said, the Internet's getting bigger, making the world smaller, right? Yeah. Which means you don't need to actually go anywhere anymore. Like you, if you just have an online presence that's really powerful, you can build it that way. Right? I met, mm-hmm. I made a lot of good friends online. And then I met them in real life, which is really cool. Like, I'm going to meet Tr- yeah. Trisha and Jason. That's what's going to happen, right? Because we're going to see each other. Like, we're, I can already consider us friends, everybody in the class. But once I meet people in real life, it changes. It's, like, it's a completely different dynamic, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, Zabby and Denzel, the people, my, my previous students who are running this whole event, I've never met them in real life. It's going to be amazing when we meet them because they did all this work. I'm very proud of them. Can't wait to see them. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. And so, like I said, like, and I've never met them. And now I'm traveling literally across the country into a different country to a new event that they're hosting. And I hope they, they keep doing it. I hope they keep making this event huge and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So they're they're bringing us to them, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and so, anyway, with that being said, hopefully that gives you guys some good advice on how you should the ideals that you should have moving forward with your mm-hmm. portfolio and all stuff. Like I'm not saying I'm not knocking education, like formal education. Like if you go to school, that's fine. Um, but take advantage of the the community aspect of it because there's people there too that are all equally as motivated. You can find them. Make sketch groups, even if it's only three of you. That's yeah. all. That, that's all that matters, man. It doesn't. You don't need like a like a army of people. You, you just need people that are there to get your back and help you out, and then eventually become your best of friends. Kalen Chalk, the another instructor of mine for this, the Robo Pencil stuff, like he's my best friend. He's been there with me through everything, thick and thin. You know, mm-hmm. I've known him since my whole like since the beginning. I've known him since when I first started painting. You know. Yeah. And we're still really, really close. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in awesome. mind. Thank All you. Right. 
All right. Is there any last questions? Or are you guys good? I don't lay down, man. I'm fucking tired. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all. Right, thank you so much. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, Thanks. You too. And you guys have a good one. And I'll see you guys next week. Oh, yeah. I think Friday Friday of next week, I don't think we're going to have class. But I still want you guys to submit. Mm -hmm. um, and what I might be able to do is just do a quick review, even if it's just text or over Skype, you know, and tell you guys what you should do next. But it won't count as an official class, if that makes sense. Like, I'll still be able to give you feedback, but I won't be able to, like, um, give you audio, audible feedback, if that makes sense. I'll just be like, hey, you know, so-and-so, good job, do this. So-and-so, good job, do this. So, so like, you know, so that way you have something to do over the week until next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So it's not like radio silence entirely. All right. Cool. Latest, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Have a good one. See you guys. Everyone have a good weekend.